Among the Hidden by Margaret Peterson Haddix, Chapter 11. Luke watched the sports family house constantly after that. Before, he had just looked out the back fence in the early morning and late afternoon, when he knew people were about. But he'd seen the face at two o'clock. Maybe the other kid knew of the rhythms of the neighborhood, too, and had let his guard down only during times he considered safe. For three long days, Luke saw nothing. Then, on the fourth day, he was rewarded. One panel of the blinds on an upstairs window flipped quickly up and down at eleven o'clock. The seventh day, the blinds in a downstairs window were left up in the morning. Luke saw a light go on and off at 9.07, two full hours after the last of the sports family had left. A half hour later, the sports family mother drove in in her red car and stomped into the house. Two minutes later, the blind in the downstairs window went down. The mother left immediately. The thirteenth day was unseasonably warm, and Luke sweated in his attic. Some of the sports family's windows were left open, though still covered by the blinds. The wind blew the blinds back a couple of times. Luke saw lights on in some of the rooms some of the time, in other rooms as the day wore on. Once he even thought he saw the glow of a TV screen. He had no doubts any more. Someone was hiding in the sports family house. The question was, what could he do about it? Chapter 12 harvest came. Matthew and Mark stayed out of school to help Dad bring the crops in, the three of them working some days from dawn until midnight. Mother's factory got busier, too, and she began working two or three hours of overtime every day. She brought up a store of food to Luke's room so he wouldn't get hungry while they were all away. There, she said cheerfully, lining up boxes of crackers and bags of fruit. This way you won't even miss us. Her eyes begged him not to complain. Uh-huh he said, trying to sound game. I'll be fine. He watched the sports family house only sporadically now. What other proof did he need? What good did it do him to know about the other third child? What did he expect? That the other kid would run out in his backyard and yell, Hey Luke, come out and play! He munched his solitary apples. He ate his crackers alone. And in spite of himself, a crazy idea grew in his mind, sprouting new details daily. What if he sneaked into the sports family house and met the other third child? He could do it. It was possible, theoretically. He spent entire days plotting his route. He'd be hidden by bushes in the barn through much of his yard. It was only about six feet from there to the nearest tree in the sports family's backyard. He could crawl on his stomach. Then he'd be hidden by the fence the sports family shared with the bird braid family. All those bird houses might actually help. After that, it was only three steps to the sports family house. They had a sliding glass door at the back, and on warm days they'd been leaving it open, with just a screen. He could go in there. Would he dare? Of course he wouldn't. But still, still... The first time he looked out the vents, and saw maple leaves shot through with shades of red and yellow, he panicked. He needed those leaves to hide him on the way to the sports family house. If he waited too long, the leaves would be gone. He began waking up every morning in a cold sweat, thinking, Maybe today. Do I dare? Just thinking about it made his stomach feel funny. It rained three days in a row in early October, and he was almost relieved, because that meant he couldn't go on those days. Didn't even have to think about going. He couldn't risk leaving footprints in the mud. And Dad and Matthew and Mark were in the way, hanging around the house and the barn, grumbling because they couldn't get into the fields. Finally the rain stopped and the fields dried up, and Dad and Matthew and Mark went back to their combine and tractors, acres away from the house. The backyard and the sports family's backyard were dry too, and it was warm again. The sports family left their sliding glass door open. If the rain hadn't knocked all the leaves off the backyard trees, the next rain probably good. On the third morning after the rain, Lute's stomach churned as he sat on his perch, watching the neighborhood empty out. He knew without question that today was the day he'd have to go if he ever intended to. He couldn't wait until spring. He wouldn't be able to stand it. He watched 28 people leave in eight cars and one school bus. Hands trembling, he made scratches on the wall again and recounted once, twice, three times. 28. Yes, 28. Yes, 
28, the magic number. He could hear the blood pounding in his ears. He moved in a daze, off his perch, down the stairs, into the kitchen, and then out the back door.